and welcome to the Wolf Chase Toyota Insider of the Memphis Tiger Network. I'm Jeff Brywell alongside Darren Schoenrock. And hard to believe, Coach, with the weather we've had the uh, <laughs> the last six weeks or so that opening day looms this this Friday. But uh, baseball season finally here for your club. Yeah, you know, we got a we got a locker room full of guys real excited to play. And we've got a coaching staff real excited to see this team compete. And uh, we've battled some tough stuff. But I think, you know, with the veteran position Blair group, we're ready to go. Well, the bonus is looking ahead at the forecast just a few days away. It is supposed to be sunny, mostly sunny all weekend. You're going to hit the 50s, I believe, Friday and Saturday and may even uh, get up into the 60s on Sunday. So it kind of continues a streak we've had the last four or five years of having some pretty decent opening weekend weather. Yeah, you never know. You know, middle of February, it's the NCAA start time, and it's hit or miss. And, and we've, we've had a colder stretch for a longer period of time this year than we've ever had to deal with in my 10 years here. So we – but, you know, luckily the first week of team practice, when starting back in January 24th, we were able to get outside. We've had, we've had you know, five or six good scrimmages outside. So uh, have an idea of, of you know, what, can, what we can do with this roster. Coach, uh, as you look at this season, uh, kind of a complete opposite of last year as far as what you had last year. You knew you were going to uh, be a little pitching heavy and the offenses are going to have to come along. Uh, looking at some of the percentages earlier today that Mark Taylor had, it's the, the pitching that just doesn't have a lot of innings or starts under the belt. The offense brings so much back for you, though. Yeah, you know, it's a, it's basically a junior, junior, senior position player team, and a couple of freshmen will sprinkle in there at some at some times. But uh, that we, you know, we knew that going in that that uh, you know I think we'll we'll still be in the same position to win and lose games from the sixth and seventh inning on. It'll just be we'll do a little bit more offensively early in the games. Last year, you know, it was it was a very quiet offensive team for five innings or so until we were able to get into some bullpens and we just leaned on our starting pitching so heavily and, and uh this year I, I think we'll 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 have the same you know, same chance to win as many games or more, but it'll be built a little bit differently. Early this year on the mound, you'll have to deal with trying to get innings under belts, try to build that experience because you look at Reed, Lee, and Descano, which will be your opening weekend rotation, just three career starts between those those pitchers. Yeah, you know, John piggybacked last year with Alex on Sunday and until Alex's pitch count was built up enough. And then uh, then he went back in the bullpen. He was very effective when he piggybacked, when he knew what days he was going to go. And then once he got back into a, a reliever's role, uh, that role didn't fit him as well. Uh, he's been very good in in our fall campaign and in our preseason. Uh, at at he's physically all the way recovered now from the Tommy John and and uh, he's got a good arsenal of things going. And I'm excited. I, I think he's going to be a very solid Friday night guy and a little bit different than Sam. You know, he doesn't. He's not going to throw it by a lot of guys, but he's going to win with location. Coach, uh, another thing you've got to do, you got to replace uh, the, the best closer you had statistically in school history. And, and Bryce Speeder moves to the bullpen. He may end up being the guy. It's going to be kind of a, a closer by committee, but I know the bullpen as a whole will be kind of the strength, at least early on in this pitching staff. Yeah, I like what we've got down there. We've got some different looks, some mix, mix and match guys. Uh, one of the things I've really been encouraged with is is we've got four or five guys that will throw strikes, and they all have something they can do to get a hitter out. Uh, Blake Myers will be a factor this year. He's had a very strong uh, redshirt junior uh, fall and spring so far. Nolan Blackwood will be a freshman. He'll be in the mix an awful lot. Of course, Craig Caulfield coming back uh, has swing and miss stuff. And then we started tinkering with Bryce uh, halfway through the fall. Uh, pitched a lot in high school and has arm strength, has good command, and, and, and has a swing and miss breaking ball. So those guys will be – uh, legitimate factors down there and then Jacob Moody you know with 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 the uh, high high velocity that he can throw uh, he he can pitch predictable by count and and uh, just overwhelm hitters with just you know mid 90s type fastball stuff and he's been in the strike zone so uh, kind of a five-headed monster down there and uh, and I'm excited about watching all of them well coach another new aspect of opening weekend people will get to see another New addition to FedEx Park. Uh, since that park's been in existence, there's been uh, some stuff here and there. A lot of it behind the scenes the fans don't get to see, but they'll get to enjoy that new padded outfield wall. And I've been out there to see it. It looks really nice. It's a clean wall out there, just the uh, the distances, I believe. And it, for anyone curious about the retired jerseys, you'll end up moving that display, I believe, to, to the back of the third base dugout eventually. I believe that's the plan. But that, that new outfield wall looks pretty nice. Yeah, I got tired of uh, got tired of trying to keep that thing painted every year. That that was a challenge, you know. We and you know, and it, part of leaving Conference USA, uh, you know, we knew we had to make some changes. And and you know, I, I'm not going to put the 
American Athletic Association logos up on the wall. We're going to leave it a clean look, more of a pro look, and uh, put the Leaping M Tigers in the both gaps and the American Conference logo down one of the lines. But uh, very excited. It dressed up the park a lot, and, and our guys are excited about it. And, uh, you know, we try to make little changes every year. You've seen some different things happen since 2010. You know, the brick wall behind the backstop last year, and we renovated our bullpen once again. We, we created a little different type of work area for our pitchers, but the ballpark's ready to go. And things are getting tied in now. You look over at Kevin Robinson and the soccer coaches. They've got the new track and soccer facility. Their first phase is done. So that whole area all the way from the Flot Golf Center to the Murphy Complex with football and baseball on there, really becoming a really nice-looking athletic complex. Yeah, we're very fortunate that we have, one, we have a lot of land. We have a lot of opportunities to create a, an athletic community over there and, and – uh, uh, you know, our athlete, our new administration is doing a phenomenal job in, in dressing up everything that's happening on South Campus. Coach, we talked about the rotation and kind of your offense this year. What do you see out of this Western Michigan ball club? Because it looks like, at least starting pitching, they've got some starts under the belt. Yeah, they've got some guys returning on the mound. And, and uh, you know, Friday night guy that had a real solid year for him last year. And, uh, you know, and I, I think early in the season, you, you, you try, you know, you know that it's going to take get guys a little time to get a feel for you know who they're hitting behind who they're hitting in front of how we're going to generate runs uh what you hope to do is you you you, you throw quality at bats on him uh we've got three three ways this team can score we can we can bang in the gaps a little bit with the middle of the order guys we've got some very dynamic runners at the top and bottom and we've got some guys that can handle a short game so we're a little more multifaceted offensively uh more so than last year and and uh you know, we got out and stole in the high 70s and stolen bases last year. I expect that number to climb closer to 100 this year. And we've put a 10, 10 bag challenge on a lot of guys that they got to give us 10 bags somehow. It might be a dirt ball read. It could be going first to third. It could be going home to second. Uh, but I'm very excited about, you know, the middle with, with Tucker Tubbs. He's really, from the beginning of fall until now, he has really solidified himself as a legitimate middle of the order hitter now. He's grown up. He's got a lot of. A lot of experience under his belt, playing a lot as a freshman. And then Kane Barrow, a new addition from the junior college ranks, will, will add some some punch to the middle. And and then we've got Jake Little healthy now. And, you know, we lost him about halfway through the year last year. And he's he's a dynamic offensive player. He can steal bases. He can run. He can hit a ball out of the ballpark. Uh, uh, so we've got some weapons in the middle that I'm very excited about. All right, Coach, sounds good. We'll see you out of the ballpark this weekend. Thanks, Jeff. That is head coach Darren Schoenrock. I'm Jeff Brightwell. It's the Wolf Chase Toyota Insider on the Memphis Tiger Network.